Hey guys, welcome to the video. And today we're going to be covering a topic that I get asked a lot, which is how do I take my source type or my events in Splunk and get them to map to a sim? How do I make my data in Splunk sim compliant? So here on Splunk Docs, um, we're just going to go over the quick documentation um, about the data models that exist um, in the sim. And on the left, it lists out all the data models here. Uh, and the one of, that we're going to be working uh, of interest today is going to be network traffic. So after selecting the data model uh, of interest, you can see here that it lists out all the fields that you can map to action, app, bytes, channel, destination, uh, etc. So um, it's always good to refer to Splunk Docs just to be prepared for how to um, best choose the data model that matches your network traffic um, in your environment. Um, as closely as possible. And I'll be able to show that to you um, in a second. So for here, if I go over to my environment, I've just run a quick search to see if I had any hits that pop in the data model for network traffic. And as you can see, I don't. But by the end of this, when we match our uh, events of interest and source type of interest to that data model, model, we'll run the search again and we'll see that the events are correctly um, mapped to that sim data model of network traffic. So if we go over to the data, uh, that I am trying to map and make sim compliant, um, I see the fields populate here on the left. And we're going to um, pay special attention to the source type that I want to match, um, which will be launch demo, um, because the app add-on builder that's going to um, help us map these fields to um, these fields right here and make them sim compliant um, is going to need to know that source type. So. Um, I'll just kind of keep in mind and I'll be referencing this data right here um, for the fields um, and how I want to map them. And that's how I selected the network traffic data model because these fields mostly aligned with the fields listed um, on this data model right here. So if, after you download the app, um, what you'll need, the Splunk add-on builder, it loads this page. And this is where we're going to click new add-on and start mapping um, our, our fields to make them sim compliant. So add on name, I'm just going to call it uh, TA uh, lunch. You can leave all the other settings as default and click create. Here, there are a lot of options um, that this app will offer you, um, but we're just going to go through and um, manage source types first. So here we're going to click add and we're going to import from Splunk because we already see um, this data is in my index of lunch. So I'm going to import it right from this index. Select the source type. Um, that's where I said it was relevant to remember what source type you're trying to match. And ours will be lunch demo. So that will populate here. Click save. Now I can see that all 1000 events have correctly been upload it into this TA um, that I'm building. And we can go next to map to data model. So here we're going to select new data model mapping. Enter a name. Um, I'll just call it lunch demo. I like to keep things um, very simple, very uniform. Again, I'll call it lunch demo. And then the app will automatically populate the search that's set to run, labeling it correctly. Source type equals lunch demo. Again, seen right there. Go ahead and click save. And now here on the left, you can see um, if you even ho hover over um, some of your fields here, it will give you a preview of the data that exists from your data right here. So it's taking these fields uh, and mapping them on the left here. And on the right is where we're going to select um, a data model to map to. And it's going to go again through the Splunk sim. All of these data models are, are documented and listed out um, the same right here. So you can kind of um, go through each one um, and look at the fields that would um, best match your environment, um, best match um, the traffic that you're trying to map to those fields. And ours, uh, like I said before, um, it's going to be the network traffic data model. So that's kind of how you look at this and, and select one. Um, definitely easiest to go to Splunk Docs and review the fields before selecting one. So I'll hit network traffic. I'll select all traffic. And here, um, if we just look for um, app and channel, you can go back to Splunk Docs, go under network traffic, and you can see app, 
and channel are supported fields. So it does match it um, exactly field for field and you can uh, click select. And now on the left, you have your fields from your Splunk environment to the SIM um, fields for the data model of network traffic. So how do we map them together? This is where the app really comes in handy. Uh, new field, new knowledge object, and we're gonna do a field alias. Now here is where you need to figure out what kind of field um, maybe like owner best matches to the SIM field. Uh, maybe they have owner itself or a user field. And right here I see user. So I will map that to user and I will select OK. And boom, we made our first field alias. Now you go through all the fields that you wish to make um, map to this data model um, just by making new field aliases or new eval statements, say you had an action or something, you can use the eval instead of field alias. Um, but I'll do IP, maybe they have a source right here. Um, click OK. And Maybe they have Mac address or device, um, device Mac right there. New, new knowledge object, new field. Um, I'll do um, device ID and I will map that to device Mac. So it's kind of knowing your data, knowing what kind of fields you have existing in your environment. And then you know what kind of data model you need to select that's supported by Splunk Sim. And then going into this app here and matching it field for field, um, best use case that you can. Once you're satisfied with the fields that you've built out, you can go ahead and click done. And you can see here um, that it has now populated as a data model with your source type um, of lunch demo listed here. So we've done managed source types. We went to map to data models, and now we need to validate and package. Um, this can take a couple minutes, um, but it's important to um, validate your package um, because this TA, um, we want to make sure it follows best practices. Um, if you're trying to certify your app, um, this is where you can validate it. Uh, we, ideally, we want to wait till this validation goes to 100% and then we can download the package um, and upload it and make it into um, our We'll, we'll make it a, a zip file and we'll extract it. And then we'll be able to see what we created uh, reflected as events that are SIM compliant to that specific data model, um, whatever you chose to do within this app here. So here it kind of gives you uh, what it titles the overall health report. And ideally you want to have all of your events in the green. Um, and we have 21 all in the green pass um, for best practice validation. And it's still um, loading out at about 78%, um, and we'll let this run for a couple minutes until it finishes. Okay, welcome back. As we can see, the validation and packaging process has completed, and these are our final um, warning messages, errors, and pass. Um, and we have 21 in best practice, um, 170 for app pre-certification, and if you want to um, review any of your um, rules, like your warning messages, um, this is where you could do so. You can th scroll through all the pages. Um, but since this is just a demo, I don't intend to push this app out um, any further. I just want to map to my SIM data model. You can go ahead and click download package. And uh, it will download. And we have to change uh, the name of the file. So I'll just drag this um, to the desktop. Um, it downloads as an SPL. Uh, we'll rename it uh, as a .zip. Use .zip. And then by double clicking, um, it will extract. And if we open up this file, um, this is where you can reference all of your comp files of interest that pertain to the source type. Um, if you ever wanted to uh, reference this or edit this source type of lunch demo in the future. Um, that is where you would do that. So we can go back to our Splunk instance. And again, um, if we go back into uh, search and reporting and we run this command again, we should see um, those events um, populate in our data model. 
So we can see our source type of lunch demo um, is now um, validated and um, you can click to expand the events and um, see where your field aliases are broken out. Um, another place to go is you can go to settings, all configurations, and actually look at your TA um, that you built and ours was TA lunch. You can go ahead and click that and see that your three field aliases um, are built out here. So again, I hope this um, app the Splunk app, the Splunk add-on builder um, has helped answer a lot of questions of how to get your um, events in Splunk to map to a sim. Uh, I just like to say that this app is especially helpful if you're using um, enterprise security, as in a lot of use cases, your data needs to map to a sim data model. So um, with that, I hope that you found this app helpful and useful, and this demo as well will help you match uh, your events and source types to make them sim compliant. Thanks, everyone. I'll see you in the next one.